Good evening. Uh, welcome to a first. This is Wednesday night uh, Bible study and prayer meeting at Lagos, except we're doing it uh, remotely. So um, we expect there to probably be a little stumbling as we go. Uh, we're going to do uh, our best, and Stephen and I are working together. And uh, we're, uh, he even mentioned a while ago, so we're missing Ricky. He's home, yes. um, holed up, quarantined. Ricky, for, I wish you were right here. Yeah, he, he's your spot, right? Stephen here. wants to be behind the camera, but he's on this side of the camera tonight. And what we're going to do, we're going to split our time. We're going to try to be as normal as we can, knowing that we're sitting in my office instead of in the worship center, and we don't have the campus full of kids that we would normally on a Wednesday night. So um, probably wrapped up in that is some reminder of gratitude for how God, how good God is to us when we're able to meet, uh, be it on Sunday and Wednesday. So thankful for that. That's right. And uh, we're going to look into God's Word, and then we've got a list of about, I don't know, it's up to about 17 different prayer needs. Uh, we're not going to pray over all of those tonight. I'll send those to you uh, tomorrow, but we are going to um, take a number of those at the end of the time after we look at uh, our devotional, after we look at a passage of Scripture and work through that briefly. We're going to spend some time in prayer, and that'll tonight be hopefully you praying there wherever you are, homework, wherever you're able to tune in, and uh, Stephen and myself leading that time. So I'm going to ask Stephen now if he would um, would just pause and pray and ask the Lord to bless this time. Mm -hmm. Let's pray together. And God, what a privilege to be together tonight, and God, even just to come to before you to your throne. Lord, thank you for your love toward us that, um, God, you have shown us grace and mercy even in the form of technology that we can gather together tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that are hurting tonight. Lord, I pray for uh, many things, God, just so much, um, Lord, that's on our hearts tonight. But uh, Lord, I pray for these next few moments that you would use it for your glory, Father, that um, as we come before you, God, that your Holy Spirit would work. Lord, you are not limited by space or time or matter and and we just acknowledge that you are God, and we thank you uh, for who you are. And we love you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to, um, you might want to pause right now, but ask you to find your Bible and, um, and turn with me over to 2 Corinthians, probably um, one of the most enjoyable times we have together, um, one of my favorite times as a church family is Wednesday nights because we sort of go a little bit unscripted, hopefully heavy in scripture, heavy in prayer, but a little more informal. We want to do that tonight, looking through the lens of what all is going on uh, in our culture around us with um, the virus. And, uh, and, you know, I was thinking about that. If someone set us down a month ago and said, hey, by the way, on March 18th, you're going to be really living in a quarantine type environment, schools are going to be closed, businesses are, you know, many public places are going to be shut down, and that's going to be happening around the world. We would have found that uh, pretty hard to believe. Uh, very unprecedented. And so I want us to look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, and I'm going to start there in verse 7. And uh, we'll talk about some of this context, but I definitely think there's some application to where we find ourselves, what we're walking through. And so tonight I want us to consider some truths that will sustain us in trying times? What are truths from Scripture that uh, encourage our hearts, sustain us to uh, remain steadfast, to put off fear and put on faith uh, in the midst of trying times? And, you know, we would even think about that, that um, there's no human being that really knows where these current circumstances are going, what that's going to look like. God knows exactly what's taking place. And so um, we find ourselves sometime in trying times. And I, I was thinking about this as I was studying and preparing that um, sometimes we would say candidly in the circumstances that we're in that we, we don't like them and we won't out. I remember when our kids were small, we were doing a um, homeschool field trip day at the McQuain Science Center and they had this space exhibit that I, as I recall, we paid, I don't know, five or $10 per kid for Maggie and Luke to ride this. And they get on this ride and they lock them in this little spaceship. And we have a camera and a um, microphone where we can see them in this little spaceship ride and we can hear them. And so the ride starts and we think they're having a great time. And about 15 seconds in, they both start crying and saying, we want out, we want out. And I thought so many times we in our human circumstances we would look to our good father and uh, we 
laughed for a little bit and we realized how terrified they were and we thought they want out and we couldn't get the ride stopped. Well, sometimes I think we're like that, that we find ourselves in circumstances that are hard and scary and we want out, but we can't get out. And so in the midst of that, God knows our frame. We are but dust and he is with us and for us. And so with that as a backdrop, I want us to, again to look at 2 Corinthians 4. Think about truths to sustain us in trying times. And I'm going to start there in verse 7. Hope you'll follow along with me. We'll define what he talks about right there in verse 7 after I read the whole passage. But we have this treasure. What is this treasure? We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not despairing, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may, may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. But having the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore also we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, sakes that the grace which is spreading, listen to this, this grace is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, that's so key, therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day, for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal. There's a whole lot there and we won't um, be faithful to do a thorough exposition of that passage but I want us to think of really I guess four different truths that we see here as we think about truths to sustain us in trying times. The first truth I want us to see is God knows, right? I think keeping that in mind, thinking, um, reminding ourselves of the truths about God's character, well, nothing takes God by surprise. Nothing occurs to him. So we will be better equipped to endure when we think biblically about God, about ourselves, about our circumstances. And I think you hit a key phrase in there we did down at verse 16, but we also get it in verse 1. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. We run a great risk of losing heart in the battle. Verse 16, Therefore, we do not lose heart. So the gospel, this treasure that we read about in verse 7, is the gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ that is this amazing, supernatural treasure that God has placed in us. So here, this Amen. eternal divine treasure that God has put in people like me and like Stephen, he's put it in these earthen vessels. So hear this, the treasure is great and amazing, but the vessel is human and weak and needy and dependent. And so I think that's a great contrast. And by the way, wouldn't we say that just the past few weeks have been a clear revelation how weak we are so companies, economies, mm -hmm. uh, board. You know, you see the governments around the world, the leading health officials. You know, the World Health Organization, the most brilliant minds in every country working around the clock. The economies moving daily as um, as this thing unfolds, and it's clear that we are not sovereign. We are not in control. So, for the first truth is that God knows and. He's given us this gospel, but he's, I think it's going to be evident in this passage, he's given that to us in earthen vessels so it'll be evident that the glory goes to him, that the greatness is his power and not ours. Number one, God knows. Number two, God cares. So not only does God know, but it, it'd be one thing if he was who he is but didn't care. He know, If he knew everything but didn't care, well, he knows and he cares. And look at this. We have, verse 7, this treasure in earthen vessels... So that, what's the purpose of that? So that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves. So people really need to look at us and see how weak we are so they can see how great 
God is. And then this gets us to the second part of what we're walking through right now. So God pours power into his vessels. It's his power. So if, we, if you're enduring this and you're thinking, man, I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about my health. I'm worried about how this is going to affect me or my loved ones or the older people in our family or what this is going to do to our economy or is our business going to be sustainable? All those are good questions, but God's getting us to a place to see that we are dependent and we're at a good place because we're dependent on him and his power is great. In fact, it's unlimited, it's divine. And so God pours his power into his vessels. We are his vessels. Now here's the hard part though. And it's because God's good and because he's going to teach us what's really important. Underneath that, God sends and allows pressure on his vessels. Now let me be clear about the context. The pressure, I believe, that's being experienced here is persecution for Christ's sake. So I'm not saying what we're enduring as coronavirus is us being persecuted for Christ's sake, but we're definitely under pressure. So God sins and allows pressure on his vessels. So if God who, if God is who, he tells us he is and he is, who we know him to be, his word reveals him to be. We have to come to the place that everything that's come into our life either came by his hand, he either sent it, or he allowed it. Right? We know he doesn't alter evil, but we're at a place that everything this, that we're experiencing, he has a part in, he's at least allowed it. And so that he sends and allows pressure on his vessel. And listen to this, what Paul says about the pressure. Paul says he's afflicted in every way. He says he's perplexed. He says he's persecuted. And he said he's struck down. You would have to say this is not a, um, a text that's written when he's at a good place, humanly speaking. So he's afflicted. He's perplexed. He's persecuted. He's not, though, destroyed. And so I want you to see this. God pours his power in his vessels. God sends and allows pressure to come into our lives on us in real circumstances. But, praise the Lord, God sets the parameters for the pressure. Let me show you this. Verse 7, or verse 8, I should say. We're afflicted in every way. We're afflicted, but not crushed. So it's like God is allowing a certain amount of pressure to, become, to come upon his children but he's limiting that, that yes, Paul can say, I'm afflicted, but I'm not crushed. I'm perplexed, but I'm not at the complete end of myself. I'm not despairing. I'm persecuted, but I've not been forsaken. I've, I'm struck down, but not destroyed. And so even in the midst of the pressure that we endure, God controls the parameters. And we can rest in that, that he's good, and so he is with us, and he is ultimately in control. So I'm going to say this, um, the economy of the world is not the ultimate determiner the direction and course of this virus is not the ultimate determiner. God is the ultimate determiner. So praise the Lord. God knows. God cares. Let's move quickly. Try to wrap up so this becomes a Bible study and not a sermon. Third, God has a larger purpose. So God has a larger purpose. And I want to drop down to verse 15. Listen to what Scripture says and think through the lens of the things that you're dealing with today the things that come into our lives. I think of the hurts in our body, the struggles in our body, the folks that are enduring difficult circumstances. Scripture says, verse 15, for all things are for your sakes. So everything we're enduring is for our sakes, for our good, I would say. Why? Why is that, God? That the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. See, God's up to something. He is not, Christ didn't come to secure us temporal comfort and happiness. He came for something greater than that. And so as we walk through challenging times in a Genesis 3 world, we realize that God's plan is to take things that are not good. All things work together for good. So I'm going to say this, coronavirus, that whole Everything flowing from that is not good, but God wants to use it to bring good. Why? So that the grace which we have experienced spreads to more and more people. And look what it does. It causes the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. So I see God working in Stephen's life, and I'm, I, I'm amazed by God's grace in Stephen's life and Christy's life and their girl's life. And so that ultimately causes me to give thanks and, and give greater glory to God. So it, it puts things in a different perspective and helps us to see the larger purpose. The last thing I want to speak to, number four, is 
this truce to sustain us in trying times is the reality of God's work, thinking biblically, allows us to see things properly. I want to drop down to verse 17. Listen to what the apostle says in verse 17 about his. He's just told us in verse 16 we don't lose heart. And by the way, um, I'm at the point that I see my outer man decaying, right? I'm north of 50. You're south of 50, Stephen. South of 40, I should say. Our, our inner man is being renewed day by day. But look what he says in verse 17. Momentary light affliction. He says all the things he's experienced, okay, being afflicted in every way, being perplexed, being persecuted, being struck down, all those things that we know were part and parcel of what the Apostle Paul endured He's able to look at them and say, hey, these are momentary afflictions, which means they don't last. Any affliction we endure is not going to last, and they're light affliction as compared to heavy. So they're, they're temporal and they're light. Momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So God's going to use things that are momentary and light to bring about something that is heavy and lasting and for our good. And so God wants to use these difficult circumstances to make us better disciples, to make us a better body. These present challenges, if we think right, they are momentary, they are light, but they're producing something that will last. I want to close our time before we go to our prayer time from this, from the uh, Valley of Vision, kept by God. So this is a uh, closing prayer for us to reflect on. Jehovah God... Thou creator, upholder, proprietor of all things, I cannot escape from your presence or control, nor do I desire to do so. My privilege is to be under the, ag under the agency, I should say, under the agency of omnipotence, righteousness, wisdom, patience, mercy, grace. Thou art love with more than parental affection. I admire thy heart, adore thy wisdom, Stand in awe of thy power, abase myself before thy purity. It is the discovery of thy goodness alone that can banish my fear. God, would you banish our fears? It is the discovery of thy goodness alone that can banish my fear, allure me into thy presence, help me to bewail and confess my sins. When I review my past guilt and am conscious of my present unworthiness, I tremble to come to thee. I whose foundation is in the dust, I who have condemned thy goodness, defied thy power, trampled upon thy love, rendered myself worthy of eternal death. But my recovery cannot spring from any cause in me. I can destroy, but cannot save myself. Yet thou hast laid help on one that is mighty, for there is mercy with you and exceeding riches in your kindness through Jesus. May I always feel my need of him. Let thy restore, restored joy be my strength. May it keep me from lusting after the world, bear up heart and mind in loss of comforts, or we're experiencing some of that, enliven me in the valley of death, work in me the image of the heavenly, and give me to enjoy the first fruits of spirituality such as angels and departed saints know. And we would say amen and amen. So God, would you help us to, by your word, to walk in these um, truths, Lord, your truths from your word to um, sustain us. So we're going to transition to um, praying for some needs. And again, Steve and I have a copy of about, I don't know, it's up to about 17 different ways we can pray. And we're going to take about half of, um, I don't know, about six or so of these and um, pray over these. So I would ask you even there at you know you to pray with us. So we'll explain a little bit about each need and we just want to spend some time praying over and, and really focus toward um, focus toward the current environment that we're in, a current circumstance. So Stephen's going to lead us off with um, one of the first prayer needs and I'll follow after him. Sure. Stephen. So the first one yep. that we're going to pray for here is to pray that we will learn spiritual lessons through mm -hmm. this trial and I am confident that, just as you were talking, God knows He cares. There are things that He wants to teach us that we need to learn. I've been mindful over the last few days of how powerless mm. we really are, how much we are dependent on Him, and how little we, I, um, often acknowledge that dependence on Him. So I'm confident that we uh, 
there are many things that we can learn from these moments, such unprecedented times and so many things that we can learn here. So let's pray. Amen. Um, Father, thank you that you are kind and you are gracious and you are good. Um, Lord, even in the midst of these challenges, Lord, in these days, God, um, they reveal things in our hearts, uh, God, that we are not even aware of, um, God, our dependence on our own self-sufficiency, and um, Lord, we see that we are truly fragile, um, Lord, we see our dependence on you, um, God, in our humanity and our fallenness, God, we see how quick we are to run to things that are lesser things other than your word or your truth and um, and so lord i pray father for uh, as we walk through these days and the weeks ahead that um god you would give us hearts to that would be open or to what you want to reveal to us god that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear lord that you would reveal your truth in in ways even that we've never seen before, Father, God, just through uh, our circumstances, Father, that we would see you working mightily and powerfully. Uh, Lord, help us to um, not depend on ourselves, but to look to you. Uh, Lord, you are the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, and we praise you for that. And so, Lord, would you um, work supernaturally in our hearts that we would grow in grace and in knowledge of you during this time and fulfilling those purposes, Father. We love you in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I'm going to pray for, um, uh, again, it's related to what Stephen just prayed uh, from our perspective, and I pray that we will look to God for hope and not to government, medicine, or to man are man-made methods. And by the way, all those are um, great blessings, our government, our health care system, and the brilliant people there, um, their means even, their blessings. And I think of how God has blessed us even in comparison to so many places in the world with the health care system we have and the government we might bemoan many things about it, but still in so many ways the best in the world. But that... Uh, those are secondary means, and so I think we can get wrapped up in this 24-hour news cycle and stay completely anxious and almost undone, and uh, what a reminder when we look into God's Word that, you know what, we have hope because of God, and that is not dependent upon the, the stock market, it's not dependent upon the U.S. government, it's not dependent upon the United Nations, or brilliant physicians and researchers to figure out we rest in God, and then we pray that he will then use all those um, means uh, appropriately, but that we will look to him and, uh, and therefore have hope. So, uh, so let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we, um, we give you thanks, God. Thank you for uh, your word. And uh, God, we are, we are mindful that we're prone to be um, like our old self, the old natural man, to look to um, temporal, Lord, to look to the government, to look to the news channel, to look to um, medical experts, God, to, to look in those places for our hope or our security, and God, we repent of that, and we acknowledge, Lord, that um, you are God alone. You are the one true living God. Is You that raises nations up and takes nations down. Lord, the nations are a drop in the bucket to you. And Lord, our lives are in your hands. And so we thank you that we have hope. And God, help us to live um, giving testimony and evidence that our hope is grounded in you. So Lord, if this world, even as the psalmist says in Psalm 46, if the mountains slip into the sea god we we hope in you and so lord you're greater even than your creation you're greater than our very health and lives you are sovereign and you are good and so god uh, we we call on you and pray that you will help us we pray that you would um, forgive us for trusting in um, or those other things government or medicine or uh, 
looking to Washington. Lord, we look to you, and you are the one from where our help comes. And so, God, we praise you that we are your people, and we ask you to work on our behalf, acknowledging your greatness, our weakness, and praising you for who you are and what you have done and what you are going to do, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And next, we're going to pray for health care workers, especially mm-hmm. many that are in the Lagos body. We have physicians and nurses mm-hmm. and other staff. And I was just talking with a brother this week about the non-essential slash mm-hmm. essential staff. And he was talking about how uh, all staff at the hospital are essential because if they're not doing their jobs, then they enable other staff mm-hmm. to do their jobs. And mindful Keep it that all running. Yeah. many mm-hmm. will put uh, much on the line to mm-hmm. continue to serve in their mm-hmm. capacity. So we want to mm-hmm. be faithful to pray for them. Mm-hmm. So let's pray for them. Um, Lord, we do just ask for a hedge of protection, God, around our health care workers. God, I'm mindful that there are many that are attending to needs, um, to, to many that are infected, Father, even within our own country. Uh, right now at this moment, Father, we just pray, uh, Lord, that you would put a hedge of protection around them, uh, around their families. Uh, I'm mindful that many give selflessly, uh, or giving tirelessly even, day in and day out. And, uh, Lord, they're going home to families and kids and uh, grandmothers and whoever else may live with them, Father, and they are, they are putting so much on the line to serve the needs of others. And So, Father, we just pray that you would encourage their hearts, that you would strengthen them, Father. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would uh, work in their midst. Lord, we pray for, even as uh, we just received news today, God, that it's here in Dothan, Lord, we just pray that you would be um, sovereign over all. You are sovereign over all. And Lord, as our physicians, even here at Lagos, and nurses will attend to needs, Father, we just pray that you would use these moments for your glory, Lord, that you would grow us in grace and knowledge of you, and Lord, that, um, Lord, as as we look to you as the ultimate selfless sacrifice, uh, Lord, that we would even see, um, Lord, see Christ in them. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that will even serve, um, Lord, just for the good of mankind, but not even out of a uh, acknowledgement of who you are. Mm-hmm. Father, I pray that you would reveal yourself, that you would use brothers and sisters in Christ that are maybe working alongside of them to to show them, even to tell them uh, what Christ-likeness that they're walking in, uh, even in lostness, Father, Lord, would, uh, in, in their serving and their giving to others, Lord, that they would acknowledge, Lord, that the greatest display of self-sacrifice is the display of the gospel of Christ on the cross, Lord. Uh, Lord, we we love you, and uh, Lord, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for the the many that are putting uh, so much on the line to serve the needs of others, and pray that you would bless them and encourage them and strengthen them. In your name, I pray. Amen. All right. Next, we want to pray for um, ask God to stop the spread of the virus. I've uh, been tracking. A, I'm sure you have similar <coughs> means. I've been tracking a Johns Hopkins. Um, app on uh, my laptop as I work throughout the day and seeing, you know, around the world how many cases, how many people have died, uh, how many people have recovered, you know, by country, and even when you get to the United States, number of cases by uh, state by state. And uh, as Stephen mentioned, knowing us in the Wiregrass in Houston County as of, as of today. And uh, so we know God can stop the spread of this virus, right? And, um, and uh, so I want to pray and, and ask him to do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, uh, we know that anyone that's working in um, science or medicine or research, God, they're working in your space, Lord, as um, you are the one that's created uh, everything out of nothing, and you are the great physician, Lord, every, even as Stephen prayed for healthcare workers, Lord, they're working in with your material and uh, so God we ask you uh, Lord we see in your word uh, your power to resurrection power to raise from the dead to speak creation uh, out of nothing into existence to uh, we see Christ um, giving sight to blind people and we see lame people walking and so 
God, we have no doubt that you're able to stop the spread of this virus. We know you can do that. And uh, God, we, we don't know all that, uh, Lord, we see through a glass dimly, so don't, we don't profess to know all that you're doing. But God, we know this virus is not good, Lord, it's part of the fall. And so we plead with you and we pray to you and we ask you, God, that you would stop the spread of it. We pray you'd stop the spread of it here in Houston County, Lord, in the Wiregrass, in Alabama. God, in this nation, Lord, I'm mindful that uh, Christ has um, come and conquered sin, and that's good news, good news for all the nations, every tribe and people and tongue. And so, God, we pray just as the gospel is going to spread, and Lord, even as we're seeing this virus spread, God, that you would stop the spread. You would thwart it. You would block it. God, you would um, undo it. And... Um, you would do it in such a way, God, that um, we would not go back to um, our old routines, but God, we would, we would give you greater glory, God, that those that haven't even considered you would uh, recognize who you are and that Jesus would get the, or the fame, the recognition, the renown uh, that is due him. So God, we plead with you and ask you to work and to work in such a way, God, that um, this virus would stop, and God, you'd be glorified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the things Pastor David mentioned earlier in uh, just an update video was how well, or what an opportunity this is to love our neighbors mm. and to reach out into our community. And um, you know, our communities are getting, it's gotten more and more where it's getting harder and harder to reach into. Mm -hmm. We've gotten sort of more internalized Close, in, our, yep. in our culture, if we're honest. And, um, what an opportunity, what an opportunity to stand tall as the body of Christ, to love our neighbors well, to serve our neighbors, especially those that are elderly. And so um, uh, we want to pray uh, that God would allow us and uh, open doors of opportunity, um, maybe even doors that just we wouldn't have otherwise. Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Um, Father, you have put us in this moment in time in all of history in the locations in which we live scattered throughout the wiregrass um, even some of us just sent out into the world um, Lord you have sovereignly ordained where we are who we are for this time Lord and, and Lord we pray and God I just ask that you would um, give us doors of opportunity moments that we can go and uh, maybe take this opportunity to get to know our neighbors, maybe mm -hmm. just to meet our neighbors, uh, to say, hey, I'm, I live down the road or across the street, and just wanted you to know if you have any needs during these next few days, few weeks, few months, whatever it is, that we're available and we're here to serve, to help, to love you guys however we can. And Lord, I pray that uh, we would stand tall as the body of Christ uh, during these times. Lord, we um, are mindful, God, that not all of our neighbors are followers of Christ, and uh, Lord, mindful that we have the capacity to love others because you have first loved us, and Lord, it's in our love for one another and others around us even that uh, the world will know that we are followers of Christ. So Lord, I pray that your light would shine brightly in and through the body of Christ during this time, God, that we would love others well we would serve others well, even as, um, God, even as you have called us into, um, into your family. Uh, Lord, thank you for the opportunity before us. Lord, help us to see it just that way, um, Lord, even in the midst of so much uncertainty. Um, God, we do love you. In your name I pray. For our last prayer need, we want to, it's amazing how um, the current, situation shows how connect, connected the world is, right? That um, things that happen in one part of the world with air travel and all the technology, but we've seen that as it relates to business and industry. So it's a prayer request, praying, asking God to bless business, industry, and the economy. So people, uh, Lagos in particular, people in general, so people can work and earn in order to, to provide for their needs. And I love what a year or so ago we studied through the Lord's Prayer. Spent several Wednesday nights, probably a couple of months doing that. And I love what Martin Luther um, said about give us this day our daily bread in there. You know, that's praying, asking God to bless the, all the companies and the 
industry, so people that can work, and that's um, that our daily bread is connected to the world's need for daily bread. So I know we've got a number of uh, members that are employees. We've got a number of members who are employers and all in between. And so in the midst of this uh, crisis, that crisis is obviously made much worse when people have to be laid off and businesses close and people can't work. And so very practical, but uh, we want to ask God to bless business industry and economy so people can work and uh, provide for their uh, material needs. This will be our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, um, you're in control of all things, and Lord, I'm mindful that um, the economy, the marketplace, God, moves at your pleasure. You've made that quite evident, God, in the last few weeks, and as we've seen the stock market, uh, stock markets around the world tumble, as we've seen businesses close, as we hear of um, people being laid off, God, we, we plead with you and pray that you would bless companies, employers, employees, businesses, industry, Lord, be that, uh, think of schools that are closed, teachers, Lord, um, people that work at hospitals, people that work in restaurants and uh, retail stores and people that drive trucks and work in law enforcement. God, it's all tied together and um, Lord, we have practical needs to provide for the needs uh, that we have individually in our family. So, God, I pray that you would bless and provide materially. Uh, I pray even you would show us, Lord, how to love our neighbors, even as Stephen was praying, and Lord, not to want to hoard things, but, Lord, even to want to share. And so we pray you would give us the ability and the health and the opportunity to work, and you would do that for all of our members and for, for our neighbors in general. God, you would bless employers that their businesses would grow and prosper and be healthy and uh, that there would just be a, Lord, even a booming economy, we pray. And uh, Lord, we thank you for how you have provided in the past. Lord, we've gotten so used to your provision, Lord, that we oftentimes take your blessings for granted. And Lord, you have reminded us of our dependence. So we thank you that you, uh, Lord, we can testify all we have needed, God, your hand. Mm has provided great as your faithfulness. Lord, thank you for our church family. Thank you for even this, Lord, it's different, but this means that we're seeking to uh, connect with uh, you and connect with each other, and uh, we just praise you and thank you uh, for this time uh, this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's going to wrap us up. I'm grateful. Stephen has uh, some very unique gifts that um, enables us to pull off things like this. I promise you we would not be doing that uh, based on my gifts. So uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. We hope to be in touch with you uh, similarly uh, for Sunday morning worship. We're striving to do that. So pray that all the technology works and uh, we'll work to keep you updated. We're certainly here to minister. So call, text, email.